Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bush, your home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and today doing a NFL 2019 draft recap for the AFC North. Uh, once again, not doing any grades. Uh, grades are silly. Uh, after the draft, grades come three years after the draft when these players had a chance to play. And again, I'll be picking out, uh, some of the picks, uh, that I think stand out worth talking about. Won't be going through each player. So let's kick it off with the Baltimore Ravens. They go, uh, number 25. They get, uh, Hollywood Marquise Brown, cousin of Antonio Brown from Oklahoma, who is a speed receiver. Uh, plenty of speed to burn. Um, a lot of people kind of think of John Ross coming out of Washington. Not sure they're the exact same player, but uh, just kind of in that area. And it's an interesting pickup. Uh, they're definitely putting together a different type of receiving core than I think they've had in a while. And Baltimore has not had good luck with receivers in the draft for a minute. And so Marquise Brown would be the latest one, but he's a very different build than the ones we've seen before. And then, uh, later on, Miles Boykin, we might as well just jump and talk about him too, uh, at a Notre Dame who is a very different body type as well than, uh, Marquis. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what they're planning on doing with Lamar Jackson overall. Um, and that's kind of outside of the draft, but he's a very different quarterback. And so I'm kind of curious to how they're going to acclimate him to a full time starter. After he was pretty much exposed in the playoffs. And so we know he can run, but what are they going to do passing wise? Is it going to be a complete college offense or are they going to actually try to get him passing? So Marquise Brown could go a long way with that. I mean, a guy that could take uh, the top off the coverage, as they say, someone that you definitely have to know where he is because he has game breaking type speed and really good route running too. And so, uh, definitely don't mind to pick, uh, Lower than I thought he might have went because I thought he had really good speed, but receivers overall didn't do too, too well in this draft. So, uh, nice pick. Third round, you get Jalen Ferguson, a guy that I was not a big fan of, especially as a first round pick, like a lot of people had him. Him going in third round is right where I'm more comfortable with. I do think he has tools. I think he has uh, a lot of length and a lot of the physical traits, but he's very stiff. And he's not refined as a, um, you know, block shutter. And so I do think that in the third round, I feel comfortable with getting the guy that we could work with and put up as another, uh, space eater in a front that has a number of guys that have tremendous strength and then have been, uh, coached up to really become block shutters. And so I think Jalen Ferguson would be nice. Now they list him as edge. I don't know. I mean, there have been guys that I thought weren't edge players in the NFL that Baltimore has shaped into, either too big or too small, and they got them there. So we'll see. But I I have a hard time thinking he's not a 3-4 DN. Um, And we'll talk a little bit about Miles Boykin. Third round's a good place for him. Uh, you're getting a lot more options at receiver, and so receiver is harder and harder to become a, a top round pick because Miles Boykin has uh 50 50 skills, but there's a lot of other guys that have it. But he's a nice big body, and so uh not the best route runner. Definitely, he's not gonna take the top off, but I do think uh his presence as a 50-50 catcher in a red zone threat will be interesting as well to work him in. Then you get Justice Hill is a guy I really like out of Oklahoma State. I mean, again, running backs a dimes a dozen, but I do think he has some real juice and electricity, uh, more so than uh, some of these other backs. And he might not have the same power these other guys do, but I do think he'll be a chunk runner. Maybe not a home run hitter. He's not taking 90 yards. You know, he's not Saquon or anything, but I do think he'll be a chunk guy where he can rip off a 20, 25 yarder. Uh, when you give him a nice crease. So that'll be kind of some, uh, electricity in the backfield. In the backfield for Baltimore that they've been rotating through backs for a long time, trying to find that one guy. And I don't think Justice Hill is going to be a, a bell cow or anything, but I do think it'll be interesting having him and Lamar in the backfield. Ben Powers, look, 
fourth round used to be kind of like the low rounds, but there's been too many good players in the fourth round that I, I, I'm starting to consider the fourth round as a premium round. Ben Powers, I wouldn't fall him in that category. Maybe a fifth, sixth round pick, but, uh, you know, Baltimore has been building that lineup. I don't think he cracks the starting lineup personally. They've been building that lineup though and with some Oklahoma products. And so it'll be interesting to get him in there with former teammate. And maybe, you know, they just are being coached a way that Baltimore likes. Sometimes you have NFL teams that get connections with a certain college team. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see, but I don't think he's, uh, you know, a big spat, splash player. Excuse me. Iman Lewis Marshall, I thought he might go a little higher. That'll be an interesting corner. Uh, Dalen Mack is a guy that I think the best of his football is ahead of him. And he'll be, he's not really like the space eater type, uh, that you traditionally think of in the D line. I think he does have more athleticism than that. So I think he's going to a good group. And then Rich McSorley, who they listed as a quarterback. I mean, I guess when you consider they took Lamar Jackson, <laughs> but other than that, nobody thought McSorley would end up being a quarterback. A lot of people were speculating what type of position he would move to. So I'll be interested to see if he stays at quarterback. I think that's one of the big questions that everybody has. So um, that's an interesting pick and definitely a flyer that I probably wouldn't have took in the sixth round, maybe the seventh round. But it might be a hint that they're going to all in on this kind of, I don't know, spread quarterback type offense system. But uh, overall, some interesting picks. Uh, we'll kind of see how they work out. But uh, um, I think, yeah, all eyes will be on uh, Hollywood, not, not just because it's the number one pick. But he's a flashy player. He's Antonio Brown's cousin in his old division. I think all eyes on him. So going to the Cincinnati Bengals, you get Jonah Williams, who goes higher than uh, a lot of people predicted. I think uh, at the beginning of the draft uh, season, he was in that conversation. But then a lot of people were like, no, Juwan Taylor, Dillard. And I, I maintain the whole time that, look, I don't think any of these guys are that great. Uh, but I do it in those two. And so actually, uh, until today, I didn't even realize he went that high. So that's pretty interesting. And they lift, listed him as tackle. And again, that doesn't always mean anything, but Cincinnati's another team that's trying to build that lineup. You got one of my favorite players last year with Billy Price out of Ohio State. And so now Jonah comes in who might get a shot at tackle after that great tackle debacle that we all seen Cincinnati go through getting two tackles. Uh, was it first round? They both came, but neither one of them panned out. So Jonah should be interested. I think one way or other, he's a hard worker, hard nose type guy, and he's going to find a way to start somewhere on that offensive line. Drew Sample was one that shocked a lot of people in the second round. Um, and I can't remember if Irv Smith was still on the board, but yeah, even if he wasn't, I don't think Sample was the next tight end up. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they saw in Sample. It's not that he's bad, but I just think this was a real strong tight end group. And, uh, I don't know if Sample was a second round pick to me. So, um, definitely has upside. I mean, he has a little bit of everything. But I don't think he's uh, an explosive athlete. I don't think he's a particularly uh, mountain of a blocker. So it'll be kind of interesting. Jermaine Pratt, I mean, North Carolina State. Uh, I mean, I see the energy. I see the, uh, the motor. Uh, I'm not sure what else I see. I mean, but that that that's really at this point all you need. And linebackers, I've talked about many times, have taken – a very big evolution and over the last few years. And what we used to look for in linebackers is nowhere near what they look for anymore. Sometimes you just need a spark plug and you sick them loose and that's good enough. So we'll see kind of what they do there. Ryan Finley wasn't a big fan of him. Ended up going in the fourth round. Uh, so, you know, never, never a bad thing to take a quarterback, especially in the middle rounds, especially when you got all these picks. Uh, Rennell ran a guy that's all potential. I did not like his technique at all. 
Uh, big dude, but, uh, definitely needs to be coached up. So we'll see what they do there. Michael Jordan, another guy I really didn't like. This is like a who's who of players I am really like. Michael Jordan is a guy I see what all the hype is about, but he goes about where I thought. I mean, he just plays like he doesn't really care that much. And so we'll see if they could get the best out of him. Again, teaming him up with his former, uh, teammate and Billy Price. And I do think he's a guard. I mean, but he's like six, seven, six, six. I don't know if they're going to try him at tackle. I don't think he has the feet for tackle. And so that's a big guard though. I don't know. I'll be interested to see how he turns out because he'll have issues with leverage at six, seven. So, uh, but you know, if you get the most out of him, that's a heck of a body. Um, yeah. And then going down, I guess like Rodney Anderson would be the one that stands out to me. A guy that was just, I think, a, a amazing college back, but the the history of injuries is just, you know, really piled up. And you had a position where it, it, it you already got a short shelf life. So I do think he'll get some spot duty. He might become a, a little bit of a crowd favorite, but I don't think he'll ever be able to sustain any success that he has, unfortunately. So, you know, looking at this draft, we'll see what Jonah does. I mean, the Bengals, I don't know, they're in a weird place. They've been in a weird place for a while. It's, they're, they're always on the edge. And so I don't think they necessarily made any sexy picks. I see a few picks that can help right away, but a lot of this is kind of potential and up in the air and I think they needed some more immediate impact guys but we'll see how that kind of turns out so going to the Cleveland Browns everybody's new favorite team uh we start in the second round which it has been a while since we heard that Cleveland's in the second round with Greedy Williams out of LSU look uh I'm shocked I mean I, I I was hearing that he wasn't passing the character test with some people but I didn't think he would go to second round. I think he was by far the best corner. But corners, again, overall didn't do well. Uh, the Giants snuck back in the first round to get DeAndre Baker. Otherwise, there would have been no corners. And so, and Baker is definitely not the best of the group. So, hey, it is what it is. He went in the second round, so did Byron Murphy. But I think, uh, the Browns probably were ecstatic to pair him with Denzel Ward, who looks like he's starting to put it together. Um, I still don't think he's the run support type, but hey, you got a guy that can quick cover guys. I think Greedy can really quick cover guys, but also has the length to uh, make the contested um, attempts on the ball. I'm scared. I mean, you know what? If he hits where he can start right away, having him and Denzel in the long run, that's going to be kind of scary. So uh, I like that pick there. Uh, uh, Sheldrick Redwine, a lot of people are kind of going back between safety and corner. I do think he has a nice build. Uh, I do think he has the movement skills, but I think ultimately he'll be a safety and that's kind of what they listed him as. So we'll see what they do with that. But he was one of uh, more interesting guys out of that Miami defense where a lot of those guys got drafted. And so he was a player I liked kind of in this process, but he goes about where I expected him to. Mac Wilson. Fifth round is crazy to me. I mean, he's not as good as Devin White or Devin Bush as far as the athleticism, but he's not far off. And he's just as good, if not better, at tackling than those two. So I was shocked, man. I don't know if it's an injury thing. Uh, again, I haven't dug into the draft as much as I usually do. So I'm not sure what it was that got him to drop, but I think that's a huge pickup. I mean, Mac Wilson... You think of all the Alabama linebackers, and I'm not saying he's the top echelon like C.J. Mosley or Dante Hightower, but you think of all the Alabama linebackers that have found starting roles throughout the league, and Mac Wilson is better than a lot of them. And so uh, we'll see if he's healthy and if he gets a shot. But if he gets a shot, I got to think he starts. I mean, I know Schubert's really good, but he's limited athletically. So, uh, I really like Mac Wilson. I'll be interested to see, uh, if he's not starting day one. All right. So that's it for that group. And again, the Browns, I, I, I've been saying mostly, look, playoff teams, they don't have to make these big splash picks. They're more a reloading or 
but they've put themselves in position talent wise. But hey, free agency doesn't always mean anything or trades and all that. So we'll kind of see how they come together. But you know, no, no overly sexy picks this year for a team that really did their work in the offseason, uh, with before the draft. All right. So Pittsburgh Steelers. They go up to get Devin Bush. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I do think that speaks towards Ryan Shazier. And look, terrible uh, to see that happen. I know there's a lot of progress with Ryan Shazier, but I honestly don't see him coming back to what he was at all or even close to what he was. He might be able to get on the field, but I just don't see him being that that type of linebacker or that type of athlete that he was before. I mean, he was already an undersized dude. And then you got this it, and it's, you know, it's tough. It's tough, but I think Devin Bush, not at all built like Ryan Shazier, but definitely the same type of plate style. And so I think this is a signal that they are trying to uh, move forward, especially with a defense that is, you know, kind of, you know, you're heading the wrong way. I would say as far as age. And so, Getting in a, a young guy that can be an energetic leader and seeing who you can retain between uh, some of the stars that you do have. I do think uh, it's a nice move to go in that direction for Pittsburgh, but I don't know that I would have gave up what they gave up to go get Devin Bush in this particular draft. That's just me. All right, so third round, you get Deontay Johnson. Uh, I'm not a guy that I thought would go in the third round, but uh, trying to add some speed. You got Juju Smith-Schuster. Of course, there's going to be a team effort to replace Antonio Brown, but to get some speed in the slot. Uh, Justin Lane, uh, I, I want to say, I can't remember the other uh, Michigan State corner. It was like Lip or Trip or something. Like, I think it was Lip, maybe. But he came out. He was a receiver, actually. Went to Miami and converted to corner. And uh, Lane was a receiver that converted to corner in uh, college. And a lot of people making comparisons to him with that the long uh, length of him and everything like that and his ability to play the ball. So it'll be interesting to see what they can mold him into. Seems like, you know, Pittsburgh's always getting secondary players, but haven't really quite cracked any stars yet. Uh, Benny Snell, I really like him. Rugged runner. Again, you're replacing Le'Veon. I mean, of course, you got, um, how am I blanking on my man's from Pitt? Uh, one of my favorite, uh, Connor. Uh, and so you got him, but, uh, you never know with the injuries. So I think getting another back in there is smart. Gentry out of Michigan. I really liked what he did. Sutton Smith. I mean, six round is a flyer. I'll be interested to see if they let him rush the passer or if he just ends up being a special teams guy. Isaiah Bugs really, really liked him. Undersides, much like Christian Miller, but uh, very energetic, very uh, technique savvy, and very um, sound in his gap. So I really like that pickup. I'm always a fan of Alabama guys. And then uh, Gilbert would probably be more of a special team guy. And you take a swing with Gray from Maryland. So uh, Devin Bush, of course, I think really – I think Devin Bush is going to start out with all the eyes on him, but I do think Justin Lane is going to, Justin Lane and Benny Snell have potential to become, uh, hot topics after we get into the preseason. So I'll have to keep my eye on those two potentially getting starting roles. Uh, so yeah, so that's it for me. Uh, go down the comment section. Let me know what you think about your team's draft. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, get the conversation started. And thank you for listening.